everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I know we have formulators from everywhere. And um, so let us know. I'm already seeing where some of you are from, New York, Canada, uh, Vegas, France. Welcome, everyone. Let us know, too, if you are a seasoned formulator. Maybe you have completed a diploma with uh, Formula Botanica or maybe you're an aspiring formulator. So drop in, let us know. Um, and of course, if you know me, if you've been on the live with me before, you know that I would much rather sit with you at a table. So you participating in the chat helps me feel like I am talking with you. So do um, let us know questions and comments in the chat today as we go along. Uh, today, we are going to introduce you to rosehip oil, tell you some awesome things about that. And of course, many of you probably know that it is coming up. I'm going to show you our little um, masterclass workbook here. Um, if you haven't joined already, do it today because how much is this masterclass? Free. It is free, you guys. You're going to get so much information. You're going to actually create your own formula of a beautiful eye cream. So I'm really excited about that. Now, rose hip is one of those ingredients in that, um, in that formula. So today joining me, and again, I'm Therese Toole. I'm one of the grading tutors at Formula Botanica. So I see um, some of the final projects that come in and I also get to answer questions for everyone in um, the Ask the Tutor forum. But I'm joined today by Brooke and Beatrice and I would love for you two to introduce yourselves a little bit. Brooke, we'll start with you. Absolutely. Hi everyone, my name is Brooke and I'm the formulation tutor at Formula Botanica. So I work as part of the education team helping to create content, working with students to get their final project done and all of our amazing team of grading tutors. I work in the lab a little bit to work on creating content and formulations for you in there and I also work as part of designing these masterclasses so it's great to see all of you making the final projects and the final formulas that we've been working on so post up in the chat and let us know if you've ever done a masterclass with Formula Botanica before because I'd be really interested to see how many of you have you seen our faces before or is this the first time you've ever come across formulation and Beatrice share with us a little bit about you Oh, hello everyone. My name is Beatriz. I am the cosmetic scientist at the Formal Botanica. I'm also part of the education team and I create content for the courses, for the lab, and I also review all our technical materials, all our, all our content. So well, that's it for me. I'm very glad I'm that you're here with us today. I'm just taking a glance in the chat, you two. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I'm seeing everywhere from brand new, like people just wanting to begin as a formulator and those in many of the um, different courses that Formula Botanica offers. So again, um, I took the masterclass even um, as many of you as a student. So again, this is your workbook. When does this start? It starts October 2nd, Monday, October 2nd. It is a free masterclass. There are five lessons. It opens each, each day, a new lesson will open. So it is a progressive course. And just because I know this is going to be a question, I haven't seen it pop up yet, but it will be recorded. So you do not have to attend live. So go ahead and make sure there, I'm so, sure someone will drop a link in here so you can get to that course and make sure you get signed up. Now, before we get going, I'm also going to add that with the course, for only 37 British pounds, I believe, 37 British pounds, you can sign up for the VIP experience. Um, if, if you want free, that's good. We can, we can accommodate that. If you want the VIP, we can accommodate that. That brings you nine additional videos. You'll get an additional workbook and then also an exclusive live for those who sign up for the VIP experience. Um, it's fantastic. I do that one all the time. And I love just that little bit extra. Um, so let's go ahead here. And we're going to, again, cover how to make your own eye cream in that course. We're going to tell you everything, how to measure out everything, how to test the pH, um, all in very simple terms, though. So that um, no matter where you're at, if you're a beginning formulator or you're a seasoned formulator, you're going to understand what is being 
taught to you all. So I have some questions. Um, first of all, first of all, for all of you joining us, have you ever formulated anything with rose hip oil? So go ahead and post that out there. Let me know if you've been able to formulate with that, work with it, heard about it, know nothing about it, and are here to find out. Um, let me know what you're doing, what you've done with rose hip oil. But let's go ahead and get started. As I'm watching for that, I'm seeing no, yes, no, no, no. So yeah, we have all kinds of um, experience here. You guys are going to love learning about this. Um, today, Beatrice and Brooke are going to share some fascinating information with you. So first of all, B, tell us a little bit about um, the versions of rose hip, um, different things like that. Give us a little bit of information just overarching on rose hip oil. Well, in this masterclass, we're working with rose hip CO2 extract, but as it is hard to find in some countries and some places, some, uh, some of, the, of the kids uh, have included rose hip oil, which is very similar to the CO2 extract, and we'll explain the differences later. But then we have uh, the rose hip oil, the rose hip CO2 extract, and the rose hip oil can come as a cold pressed oil or as a refined version of the oil. So we have some variations in the in the region. And uh, well, as for the lipid profile, rose hip oil and rose hip, rose hip CO2 extract contain a variety of essential fatty acids like linoleic acid, lin alpha linolenic acid too. And it also, it also contains a variety of carotenoids like beta carotene, lutein, and others. So it has an amazing antioxidant profile and it's an amazing ingredient to work with. It has an incredible skin feel. So it is a very light oil, has a very nice touch. Um, it doesn't have a strong scent too. So it is uh, very interesting. It also has a beautiful, orangey, rosy color, which is one of the reasons we chose to use this oil because it gives your formulation a nice color. Um, it is very subtle, but still very beautiful. And well, I think these are some of the versions of rose oil we can use. Sweet. I'm noticing in the comments, Idris has used it in a scar cream. And Sue has used it in a whipped shea butter. So there's so many different um, uh, practical uses for this ingredient. Brooke, can you tell us a little bit about um, vitamin C in rosehip oil? Absolutely. So rose hips in general are really well known for their vitamin C content. And a little bit of a fun history fact, they were actually used in England in World War II because they had, during the um, German occupations, we had a lot of difficulty getting foods with vitamin C, like oranges and lemons. And it actually was made, you, vitamin C, uh, sorry, rose hips were made into a rose hip syrup that was given to children because it gave them vitamin C content and stopped them getting scurvy. But it doesn't, rose hip oil doesn't actually contain any vitamin C in itself. So the fruit of rose hips do. They have lots and lots of vitamin C. They're really high and it's really wonderful to use for foods and things and in any water-based products. But because vitamin C is a water-soluble active ingredient, it means it's not present in the oil or the oil-based extracts. So when we use rose hip oil in our formulations, you're not getting that benefit of vitamin C in there. You're getting lots and lots of other benefits, but if you want vitamin C specifically, it's much better to use it in water-based products and you won't get it from rosehip in that particular instance. So it's a myth we see a lot where people start using rosehip wanting the vitamin C content and unfortunately it doesn't quite work that simply. So if you want vitamin C content, there are other ingredients that might be easy to look into or look into water-soluble Make sure you get water soluble um, sources of it. Yes, that is a big piece of misinformation out there is the vitamin C content in oil soluble. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, Beatrice, I'm going to start with you, but I'd love to know what both of you think on this. Uh, tell us a little bit about what rosehip oil is used for and what some of the benefits are of the rosehip oil. 
Well, as I said, rosehip oil contains essential fatty acids, and these fatty acids help reinforce the skin barrier, and they also have uh, an anti-inflammatory and soothing action. So they are very gentle to the skin and help uh, help it um, repair uh, damaged and dry skin. And besides, it also contains a lot of antioxidant compounds like carotenoids, which help to protect the skin from uh, free radical damage and from environment, environmental stressors too. So it helps uh, slow down uh, aging signs and improve the appearance of hyperpigmentation too. It is a wonderful oil with lots of beneficial properties. And let's see if Brooke has anything else to add here. <laughs> Absolutely. Rosehip oil in general is fantastic in, in products that are designed for more maybe mature skins or dry skins, sensitive skins. Anyone that needs a little bit more barrier protection, as Beatrice said, because these essential fatty acids are fantastic for reinforcing the skin's barrier. It's the, it is great for helping with hyperpigmentation, so any dark spots or scar tissue as well, it can really help to reduce the look of that over time it's not something that works instantly but over time as part of taking care of the skin it can really help with those signs of any sort of pigmentation it's fantastic in products like oil serums so when you're wanting to have a nice light facial oil it's not too heavy in a texture so it's really lovely to have on facial oils nighttime products uh, maybe night creams or light facial lotions and of course, in eye creams, it is fantastic for around the delicate eye area because the skin around your eyes is so delicate. It needs really sort of gentle ingredients and things that can help with like um, issues like hyperpigmentation, dark circles, and helping to really moisturize the area around the eyes without weighing it down too much and giving you any sort of issues on that front. So it's a really fantastic oil to work with and a lot of people really love using it and I do as well. Now there's one thing that I would like both of you to touch on here and Brooke, I'm going to start with you. Um, no, we're talking about rosehip oil, but in the masterclass, we are using rosehip um, extract. So can you explain the difference between those two? And to add just a little nugget there too, Teresa asks, could you use rosehip hydrosol? So Teresa, I don't know if you're talking in specific in the formulation that we're going to do, or if it produces a, um, if you can produce a hydrosol from rosehip, but um, would the two of you address that? So the differences between the extract and the oil and just a little touch on hydrosol. Of course. So the differences between the two, there's actually not too much in terms of the difference between the extract and the oil, they are very similar in terms of their lipid content and the benefits that they have. The extract is just extracted a little bit differently and it's a little bit stronger in terms of its color. It can come across as a much richer color than the oil. And it's also got a longer shelf life, which is why the main reason why we chose to use it for the formula is because it does give you that longer shelf life, which makes it easier when you're formulating. But if you can't get a hold of the extract, it's not as easy to get everywhere in the world, as Beatrice said. So a lot of our kit suppliers actually swap it for the oil. And that's perfectly fine. You can use the oil as well. And the oil is really easy to get all over the world because it's quite a common ingredient. And I think in terms of the hydrosol, you can make hydrosols out of rosehip. I don't think I've ever seen one for sale, but I'm pretty sure you could probably try making one if you wanted to, to extract some like maybe like an infusion or something, but it is a lot better when made in to oil-based ingredients because a lot of the a lot of the actives and the good points for it, it does lend itself better to oil-based ingredients. You could include um, other f forms of rosehip into the eye cream if you wanted to, but I've never seen a rosehip hydrosol for sale, so I wouldn't. If you if you can find one, that would be fantastic, and let us know in the comments if it's one that you found but I don't think I've ever seen it for sale actually come to think of it <laughs> I don't know if either of you have yeah actually I don't think there is a, a hydrosol made from rosehip because hydrosols are byproducts of the distillation of plants and plant materials and while we have rose hydrosol made from the flowers the rosehip the fruits uh, they don't have uh, volat many volatile compounds 
to be distillated. So we usually don't distillate plants that don't um, have volatile compounds because we won't get anything. We only get water from the distillate. So we don't have rosehip uh, hydrosol, but you'll find rose hydrosol made from the flowers, which is uh, very um, pleasant. And it has a very delicate scent of rose and we use it in various formulations, including our formulation for the master class. So yeah, I think that maybe answers your question about Perfect. the hydrosol. And I see uh, Teresa commented uh, that she wants to get the vitamin C content from rosehip. To get the vitamin C, you would need a water soluble extract, like an infusion or uh, extract made with glycerin or some other types of water soluble extracts, but it won't be present in any oil soluble uh, products made from rosehip. Okay. I also see, thank you for adding that. I also see that um, Diane is in the process of infusing her rose hips in jojoba oil to use them for a face serum. Diane, that is going to be lovely. Um, I can't wait to hear about that. Um, all right, so let's talk about some tips on working with rose hip. Uh, Brooke, would you like to start us off? Of course. So one of the biggest tips that you will always come across whenever you're working with rose hip is the fact that it is heat sensitive. And this is because of those um, antioxidant compounds that Beatrice was talking about earlier. Those are, can be quite sensitive to heat. Those antioxidant compounds do not like being heated very much. So we would definitely recommend whenever you're working with rose hip oil or you're working with rose hip extract, make sure that it's always added to the cool down phase of your formulation when it's under 40 degrees Celsius. So this applies with whether you're making a facial serum, whether you're making an eye cream or a face cream, it's always better to add it under there. And it's iodine level as well is plays a part in what makes it heat sensitive. It's quite a quite a high iodine level, which is fantastic for us because it means it's really good for the skin, but it does mean it's a little more delicate to work with. And whenever you're formulating with it, make sure you're aware of its color because a lot of times we want the color in the products. We want that lovely sort of orangey color and there's different colors that you can find with rose hip. But it does mean that if you want to perhaps make a perfectly white cream, it's not best ingredient to choose unless you get a refined version but that does then affect the benefits that your rosehip oil will have to your products. Thank you. Beatrice would you touch a little bit on what are some of the benefits of using rosehip oil? Yeah, well, we already explained a little bit that it has anti-inflammatory properties. It, it has a soothing action. It's an excellent uh, moisturizer for the skin and it has lots of antioxidants. So it has antioxidant properties. And I want to touch on another uh, delicate subject and misconception about rosy oil, which is the, um, that uh, many people say that it contains retinoic acid and that uh, most of its action come from the retinoic acid content of rosehip oil. And uh, recently I've been studying about it and I found that uh, indeed rosehip oil contains a small amount of retinoic acid, but uh, it is too small to have any noticeable effects. And as we're using a small amount of uh, rosehip uh, CO2 extract in the formulation of the masterclass, we won't have enough retinoic acid to have any, any real effects from it. But it, in the end, we have many other benefits that come from other compounds present in rosehip oil or rosehip CO2 extract, but uh, its action doesn't come from retinoic acid. So just to clear that. Beautiful. And, um... B, I'm also going to ask you to touch on Shaquilla asks, is rose hip derived from rose petals? So can you talk a little bit about the misconception on where it comes from? Yeah, well, it's kind of for confusion because it comes from a rose plant and we have a variety of species of rose. And usually we see ingredients that are derived from rose flowers and rose petals like 
rose hydrosol, essential oil, rose absolute, but rose come, uh, is, are the fruits. So rose oil comes from the fruits and the seed of the fruit and not from the flowers. So it doesn't come from the blossoms, it's com it comes from the fruits. And yes. Brooke, I learned right before this that you actually are going to share something with everybody. Go ahead. I have. So I actually have here from my garden outside some rose hips that I picked directly off the tree. So this is what rose hips look like in their natural form as they've come off the tree. So I'll see if I can show it you there. So these are the fruits of the rose plant. These generally come from species more like dog rose or musk rose rather than the sort of red or pink roses that you would get if you were buying flowers from a florist for example. These are a lot more a little bit more wild in nature so they still have those pesky little thorns, they have their little tiny leaves and they're just starting to change colour now because it's autumn in the UK. But inside of these fruits you have they are essentially little fruits and you have lots and lots of seeds and inside those seeds is where we get our rosehip oil so they're very very tiny you can see in there they're really small little fruits but they pack a really big punch when it comes to skincare benefits so that is what they look like sweet that's beautiful i see somebody from facebook said this reminds me of my childhood the rosehip does that sweet they used that's to sweet. chew on them they were tasty, um, but back in the day, she didn't know the benefits. Um, that, yeah, that's awesome. I'm seeing people infusing it in argon oil. Um, you all are really diving in here. I love it. I love it. And somebody <laughs> said, do not confuse them with cherry tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> They taste a little bit different to cherry tomatoes. They are much better if you can sort of cook them down. At the moment, they're a little bit tough, but yeah, they are really delicious. They have a lovely sweet flavor to them. You ladies have shared so much, like you've just like super packed a ton of information into a really short amount of time. Is there anything else in closing that you want to um, add about rosehip oil or extract? Yeah, I have one thing I think we didn't comment about the, as I said, we have uh, cold pressed oil, we have refined versions of the oil. And sometimes people ask us uh, why my oil isn't orange, why is it yellow, it has a light color. It is because uh, if you're buying a refined version of the oil, it removes all these other compounds that aren't triglycerides. So it will remove all the carotenoids and other as compounds present in smaller quantities. So it will remove the compounds that give the oil the color. And also even for the cold press oil, which preserves all these amazing compounds that rosehip contains, uh, sometimes you have variations from different batches, from the season you, you collect the plants. So you, you may have some variations in the content concentration, but uh, it doesn't mean that your rosehip oil is adulterated or it isn't rosehip oil. So just so you know that if your rosehip oil isn't a, a, doesn't have a strong color, it doesn't mean it isn't a rosehip. So just maybe have a slight variation in the lipid profile and the compounds present. Ladies, we do have a question coming in here that says there are different inky names for what we call in real life rosehip oil. Could you comment on it? How different are they in a matter of skin benefit? Um, yeah, we have uh, rosehip derived from different species of rose plants. Like uh, Brooke said, we have musk rose, dog rose, and other varieties and species of rose. But the oil is very similar. It probably will have slight variations in the lipid content, but nothing that really affects the properties of the oil. So they are very similar. They'll have uh, different inky names depending on the species. You have like uh, Rosa rubiginosa, Rosa muscata, and other inky names, but these are all rose hip, so don't worry. All right, thank you. There are so many more questions coming in here too. So I'm sorry you guys were not gonna be able to get to all of them, but 
nonetheless, keep in mind that if you sign up again for the masterclass that starts October 2nd, it is a free masterclass. I want to hit on all these points again, because I know some joined us later. So again, October 2nd, uh, free masterclass, you have the option to do that 37 pound uh, British pounds for the VIP experience. You get so much more there. But all of these questions that we couldn't get to today, you can ask over there because there are three live Q and A's. So that's a lot of content. That's a lot of information you get to formulate, but you actually get access to human beings that will answer your questions too. So get signed up for the masterclass. Um, tell us, drop in here really quick if you're signed up. I'd like to know that. And again, in the feed, you will see that they are posting the link so you can get signed up today. When you sign up, you will get access at that point in time to, again, this workbook that I have held up. You'll be able to print it or just keep it online. It doesn't matter. Um, you'll have the list of ingredients that you need. Uh, there is a kit that you can buy also. You probably still have time if you do it quickly. You might still have time to get that kit in to where you just place one order and you have everything in your hands to make that product. Um, we are going to be literally with you every step of the way through that masterclass. That again starts when? Monday, October 2nd. I'm seeing yes, signed up. Yes, I've signed up. Um, so again, those lessons are released daily. You do not have to be able to attend live. They are recorded. So you can catch up um, anywhere, any time along that way during that week. You can catch up. If you can't catch them right when they're released and catch it in the evening, go ahead and do that. Um, also within that, for those of you who have already signed up, let me know if you've already gone out and joined the private Facebook group. There's a Facebook group that is just for this masterclass. So again, that's just another avenue for you to go ask questions, get more inspiration um, from others who are using it. And it's going to be quite a um, action-packed week, an information-packed week, an inspiration-packed week. So make sure you get out there in the Facebook group. Um, if you join from this, go out there and say, hey, Beatrice and Brooke, I signed up. I'm here. We'd love to hear from you. So ladies, do you have anything else in closing to add to all of our friends who've joined us here today? I think you've covered all of the facts that they need to know. And I all hope right. you've all got something useful out of hearing all about the lovely rose hip. And I can't wait for you guys to try out working with it. I think you're going to love giving it a go and seeing what it can do for your skin. Yes. Thank you all for joining us. Again, we will let you go for today. It has been a pleasure. We know your, your time is precious. So we don't take this lightly that you've been here, but I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And we look forward to seeing you over in the masterclass on October 2nd. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us.